So welcome to part two of the Course in Miracles Manual for Teachers. Um, and we get into the section called What is the Christ? Um, now, this is, again, bear in mind, from a complete non and total non-dual perspective, unity awareness. This is if you're if you're a if you're new to a course in miracles, this is not for you. And I mean it with the utmost respect. Not that you're not intelligent, not that you're not conscious. Simply that this is this is really dialing into a complete non-dual perspective. And the last thing I want to do is take away the hope that the symbolic Jesus or the symbolic Christ or the symbolic Holy Spirit um, provides you. So if, if you have a really deep relationship with the symbolic Jesus, which you believe is a being, then, then switch off right now. Um, you will probably find this um, soul destroying and um, it'll probably make you angry. And you'll probably get very angry with the course because you'll think it's tricked you. It hasn't tricked you. It has gradually brought you into non-dual awareness. So if you've been studying the course for a while, this will make sense. And it will get rid of sense perception. It will bring you into the awareness of the awareness you are. So what is the Christ? Not to be mistaken with the symbolic Jesus. Um, Christ is another word for true self. So in the Advaita circles, for example, non-duality Taoism, they speak of the self or the Atman. And so Christ is the self and the self is the son of God, fully aware he is the son of God. He is the extension of God, eternally extending. God is spirit and therefore the son is spirit too. God is holy, therefore the son is holy too, holy spirit. Holy as in W and H as in holy. Holy, holy, son, spirit, ever extending. Christ is the essence, essence energy, extension of God. Essence energy, what's God's essence energy? In our duality, we experience that essence energy in moments of total peace, total clarity, total silence, total unconditional, unwavering, compassionate love, uh, pure en love essence energy. It's just pure love, like as in pure energy. No separation, no distance, complete unity with all, with all of it. That's the essence. That's the holy instant, the eternal, a holy instant, because it's one instant forever now. And what does the Course say? Christ is the Son, God's Son. It's the extension. God's Son, we're using symbolic Christian language. God being not a being, energy, just purely energy, source energy, ever extending. And that extension is known as the Son. Christ is God's son as he created him. Now, we, the course refers to God as a he. He's neither he nor a she. But please take note and be very careful of this. When the course speaks of son, spirit, Holy Spirit, God, it denotes he. When it speaks of ego, it always denotes it because it's not real. Okay, so God, God, son, God's son is energy. God is energy. God is spirit. The son is spirit. So God's son is spirit, energy, as God created him, and remains so forever. He is the self we share. The self meaning the self-same essence, energy. It's our one shared being in God's indivisible being. He is the self we share, uniting us with one another and with God as well. Now, in the course, it's very specific. When we speak of the self or Christ, we're speaking in God. No dream. When we speak of the Son of God, we're now speaking of the mind asleep. And the sons of God are the fractured parts of the one dreaming mind. Now, the Christ mind is awake. A part of it appeared to fall asleep and awake. It's awake again. The reason we're replaying the dream, the reason we think we're here, is we're replaying a memory of guilt that we haven't forgiven ourselves for. The minute we forgive the guilt, we awaken fully into the Christ self we are, the extension of God. So is the self he share, uniting us with one another because we're fractured selves, one dreaming mind, one son of God, and with God as well. Why? Because it contains the same, same essence, same self essence as God's essence. So the Christ is the thought, 
which still abides within the mind that is his source, source God, ever extending, a thought in the mind, the extension of. So it's not God is thinking, God is a being sitting there thinking. God is just pure energy, and a thought is a way to describe the extension of this energy. He has not left his holy home. He's still forever the extension energy of source energy, the formless primordial energy which has existed long before the universe, well, well, universe came into being as a instant and disappeared again. It appears to be real to us because we haven't forgiven it. We haven't forgiven the memory. He has not left his holy home, nor lost the innocence, the defenseless innocence, the impeccability, the perfection, which is spirit in which he was created. He abides unchanged forever in the mind of God. So realize that in each one of us is a memory of this, which is our true self, our true essence energy. That's our true absolute reality. Not our subjective realities as body, minds, people, places, things, and events traveling through time and space. That is unreal. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Nothing real, okay? The, what is real is God. God alone is real. And, the, and God is forever extending. And that extension is the Son, the Christ. It's what we are in truth. It's the real part of us that is alive. It's the very same thing that animates us and gives us the appearance of life. Christ is the link that keeps you one with God because it's in your mind. It's because you are mind. But the minute we fell asleep, we fell out of the mind or appeared to fall out of mind as aware. So we fell into dream. You're awake now. You fall asleep. It seems that you're out of your awake mind, but you're still dreaming. It's just dream. It's the link that keeps you one with God and guarantees that separation is no more than an illusion of despair for hope forever will abide in him for you always abide in God. Christ is awake mind. It knows it's in God. It knows it's God extension. A part of it is asleep ego mind, wrong mindedness in which it imagined what it could be and then projected into form. So it could keep us keep itself preoccupied with form, with the problems of form keeping the, the separation, the fracture of self, this fracture of spirit, a secret dream. And then the projection seems real, which is why every time we reincarnate in the dream, we forget having been in the spirit world. Well, most, 99% forget. Some come through with memory and they're here to share the remembrance that even the spirit world and this and this world are identical in the sense that as, as above in the dream, so below in the dream, they both dream. No matter what facts are true in the dream, it's still a dream. It's not real. Every part of our fractured dreaming mind contains the Christ. So every single being in this planet and throughout the universe, every sentient being, the essence energy of every living thing is Christ. Everything. And what did religion do? It was a select group. And what did the spiritual groups do? The 444,000 chosen ones or the celestial ones or the star children, the special ones, and everybody else is asleep and some are going to awaken. So every single one awakens to self. Everything is one. Everything is you. If you think you're more awake than someone else, you're just as asleep because it's your sense of separation that says, I'm special, I'm awake, everyone else is asleep. That's bliss bunny nonsense. We don't do this in an advanced teacher manual for, for people that truly follow the Christ within, returning inward to self. There's no journey. There's no distance. It's an inward journey. It's an inward stepping in, abidance. And it guarantees. So Christ is the link that keeps you one of God and guarantees that separation is no more than an illusion of despair. That is over. You remain. Your mind is part of his and his is yours. God's mind is your mind. Your mind is God's mind. One indivisible mind. Essence, energy, forever extending oneness. Christ is the part in which God's answer lies. So what is God's answer? It's the correction principle. Awaken to self. You are my holy son. You could, this, what you, whatever's appearing isn't real. Where all decisions have already been made. And all dreams are over. This dream is over. How come you seem to still be here? You have not forgiven self and others because you, you hold the world in bondage. We, the ego says, the ego in us says, I am the thing you've made of me. I blame the world for all my pain, all my suffering. I'm suffering and I blame myself and I, I have, there's a blame to it. The minute there's a blame, there's a resistance. A resistance is a denial. And while you're in resistance, you make illusions real and you cannot awaken. Forgive, forgive, 
forgive, Holy Son of God. Abide in silent stillness, forgive. If you're not in silent stillness, you're practicing forgiveness. That's it. All decisions are already made and the dreams are over. Christ remains untouched by anything the body's eyes perceive. We don't see, we project. Eyes are projecting, not seeing. For through him, okay, sorry. For though in him his father placed the means for your salvation. The means is the memory of God. And the memory of God in the course is called voice for God or Holy Spirit. Remember, Holy Spirit's not something. It's not an entity outside you. It's your essence energy, which God has spoken life into, which God has spoken the memory of your true self, your Christ self, and himself, which shares the same self. So, for, the, for though in him his father has placed the means for your salvation, yet does he remain the self who, like his father, knows no sin. You've never left. You are pure energy. You are pure love. You are pure love. You are the very thing you're searching for in others, people, places, things, and events, in activities, in jobs, in special love relationships, in houses, in cars, in money, in power, and wealth. You want all those things. You want those specific things because you think they're going to give you happiness. What you really should be asking for is heal my mind so I know I'm already perfect and always happy. Home to the Holy Spirit. So remember, Holy Spirit, Memory for God. So whenever I say Holy Spirit, memory for God, your true essence energy. Our essential nature, which perceived through the body, peace, love, joy. Those triangulate. You can't have either of those. You cannot have peace without love. You cannot have love without joy. You can't have joy without peace. Those three triangulate. The holy trinity of sensations and awareness in this body mind. Peace, love, joy. Home to the Holy Spirit. The memory of God. And at home in God alone, you've never left. Does Christ remain at peace within the heaven of your holy mind? Holy mind, awake mind. Christ is your awake mind. Christ is our collective awake mind. When the Christ, the Son, awakens to self, the entire universe dissolves. Because the entire universe are activities of his dream. Thoughts that have taken form. Thought forms have taken physical form. The universe. First, we were just spirit energy. Fractured spirit energy floating, floating around in nowhere, space time. And then our idea of ourself created the idea of space, time, and illusion, matter, material, where we really have never left. So, Christ, so, and at home in God alone, does Christ remain at peace within the heaven of your holy mind? This is the only part of you that has reality and truth, absolute reality. Absolutely, not subjective body mind reality. The rest is dream. Yet, will these dreams be given unto Christ? Because He's calling us all home. We're letting go of fantasies, dreams, hopes, wishes, and remain, remain, remaining true to self. They will be given unto Christ to fade before His glory, the light of awareness, and reveal your holy self. So, you're not becoming something, you're simply letting go of all the filters that prevent you from knowing what you are. Be thyself knowing, Holy Son of God. So reveal your Holy Self, the Christ to you at last. The Holy Spirit, so the memory of God, reaches from the Christ, your true awake mind, to you, the fractured activity of a dreaming mind, in you, to all your dreams. So it's the light that calls us to be ourselves knowingly and bids them come unto him to be translated to truth bring illusions to truth and what happens when you bring a shadow to the light it dissolves he will exchange them for the final dream which god appointed as the end of dreams a happy dream so the world starts to mirror your happy state of mind because the world is an outer reflection of an inner condition you will you will become dispassionate about the world's activities you will become you will you will detach you will sorry you'll be non-attached to any outcome you won't have any expectation of anything yet you'll show up and show up lovingly from a loving place and and share the love you are with all of yourselves for when forgiveness rests upon the world and peace has come to every son of god now we're talking about every fractured every fractured idea entity body form um, body mind idea 
every son of God. So son of God is spoken in this course in two different ways. In this specific context, it's saying our fractured parts of ourselves, what appears as human beings and animals and, and everything you see. So when pieces come to every son of God, what could there be to keep things separate? For what remains to be see, to see except Christ's face. Now, Christ's face is not a face of Jesus. It's Christ is formless energy, pure light. So Christ's face is faceless face, formless face. You simply recognize the love in everyone. You're not going to see Jesus everywhere. Because okay? if you're starting to see Jesus everywhere, you're schizophrenic and you're delusional. There's something you need to take pills. I see those doctors that give you those nice white jackets that zip up the back and they have little belts and stuff. And then they put you in a nice little cozy padded room so you can't hurt yourself or anyone else. Okay, because that's the cuckoo special love relationship. Look how special I am. Jesus talks to me. That nonsense is 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 uh, nonsense. It's nonsense. Okay, it's schizophrenia. Because what's really love's calling, but of course they've now interposed a filter that looks like Jesus. And it's now, oh, we're seeing Jesus everywhere. You don't see Jesus anywhere. It's a singular symbol. Omnipresent singular symbol within you, the memory of what you are. But that's a talk for this coming Sunday. So it's come to every son of God, every fractured dreaming mind. What could there be to keep things separate of what remains to see except Christ's face, to be thyself knowingly? Christ's face is the symbol is a symbol for love, for the love we are. It's the recognition. Everything is love, for God is love, and God is all there is. And how long will this holy face be seen when it is but a symbol, the symbol, that the time for learning is over and the goal of atonement has re been reached at last, awakened awareness, purely aware awareness we are. The silent stillness is awareness. Awareness is aware of what? The timelessness of silent stillness. So therefore, let us seek to find Christ's face and look on nothing else, the formless face, pure energy. We're no longer attaching form. Therefore, there's no more judgment. There's no more comparison. Everyone looks alike to us. And what you'll recognize is that as this starts to, as your mind starts to, stops judging, as your mind starts accepting what is, stops judging, starts remembering its true self, you'll, you'll be looking at people thinking, I recognize this person, I recognize this person. You feel like you've known everybody. It's no, you know the essence because you you what you know in them is your shared Christ essence. It's your shared essence with the self, the self shared essence with God. And as we behold His glory, we will know we have no need of learning or perception or of time, ready to put this down, or anything else except the Holy Self, the being of thyself knowingly, the being the love, and now the love flows through you. So there's a time in our lives where we retreat, where we hide, we become reclusive. This could take lifetimes where we, we want to hide from the world. We want to be alone. We've left alone and, and be in stillness. Now, once that stillness is ignited with the memory of the love we are, it wants to come back and pour itself lovingly, ignite the remembrance in every single fractured self of the love of God we are, of the Christ we are, of the one Holy Son we are, the eternal extension of God's love. So there'll be no need of learning or perception or of time or anything except the Holy Self, the Christ whom God created as his son. We are that, the ever-extending energy, which is love, unconditional. No judgment, no space-time, no them and us. There's no beings, there's no bodies, there's no spirits, there's no ghosts, there's no angels. There's just light, ever-extending. Now, be that knowingly, Holy Son of God. If we think of Christ, and this is vital, this is not in the course, this is my own explanation. If we think of Christ or Jesus or Buddha or Krishna or Ramana Maharshi or whoever, whoever has brought us into awareness, whoever's books we've read, whoever's taught us, uh, whichever teacher came to us, if you think of them as anything other than an egoless, an abstract presence, an egoless and abstract presence of right-minded love, unity awareness, which represents the state of true self, which is the eternal extension of the love of God, then we know not what we think of. If you think of Christ in form, 
as a Jesus, a Buddha, a Krishna. As you think of the Atman in form, you're out. You're in, in sleep again. Ego has created a filter, an objectified filter outside yourself. It's formless. Christ is formless. Symbolic Jesus is formless. The minute you give him an appearance, and you pretty boy and long, long blonde hair and blue eyes, and it's always some Spanish, Italian something model. The guy was Jewish. He could have been bald and short and fat for all we know. So we, this was a Roman image of the men they appreciated back in those days. And the minute you put that picture up and you put up a little picture of Jesus here or Krishna or Ramana Maharashi or Papa G, hey, you're out. You're objectified yourself. And the minute you've objectified it, there's two of you. It's the one shared essence. It's God's essence. And if you do that, what you're really doing is you're trying to bring truth into illusions in the form of a symbol or an idol and make another illusionary fantasy for yourself in which you see yourself with the eyes of the ego specialness, egoic specialness. Because now you believe that Christ or Jesus or Buddha or whatever is now going to hold your hand and your little child. Why? Because you haven't grown up into the self you are. We love these little symbolic Jesus holding the child because it's our inner child, our wounded inner child. Hey, there's no wounded inner child. That's an illusion of yourself. If you think of yourself as a wounded inner child, you're holding the world responsible for hurting you. The world you made. And, that, and thus we always say, I am the thing you've made of me. But I'm innocent, so Jesus will hold my hand and take me to heaven, and you will suffer hell and damnation. Don't see yourself as a little child. Innocent, yes. The defenseless innocence of a child, yes. But don't think of yourself as a child's mind. You are God's mind, the eternal awareness of self. And so we get trapped in this Jesus holds my hand. And what do we do? Holding Jesus' hand, trying to drag him down to earth. Why? I want Jesus to make my life special. All men are assholes, so Jesus is going to become my lover. And now Jesus lives with me in this world. And Jesus, give me a parking spot. And Jesus, give me a money. And Jesus, make this relationship work. And Jesus, help me find my way in the dark. Or Jesus, help me not be afraid. So what do we do? We step up, and it brings us closer to Christ awareness. And then we recede and step back and stay in the illusion because we have a relationship with Jesus or Christ or Krishna or Buddha. Or we've gone to the ashram. We've met the, we've met the guru. Oh, I can just feel the guru's love. I have no love, but the guru's love. Hey, if you're feeling the guru's love, it's love. The love you are recognizes the love he is, the love we all are. But now you ascribe it to him back into duality. And the symbolic Jesus holds your hand. It's going to take you to heaven but let's stay a little longer and just have some fantasies let's get together let's create a circle let's create a, a course jesus community and we all love jesus and let's hug each other because we have a common love of jesus you're in love with a symbol a symbol's become an idol the very thing he teaches us not to do first commandment have no other gods besides god And if we think of Christ as a form or a body we recognize, here it is, then we have not realized our true self who contains the holy memory of God. And if we fail to recognize the self, the self-same essence, the holy essence, the awareness we are, we all are in truth, every single one of us. Mother Teresa and Hitler, every single one of us then we fail to recognize the love of God we are. And although you may be in a happier state, in a less judgmental state, you'll be back. And, and the only reason you're here is to realize what you are so that you never have to come back into form, so that you can rise to the Christ mind. So the fractured part returns to the awake part. And the awake part lights the mind ever that much more. And so when fractures of itself reincarnate, they reincarnate with lighter, brighter light, a stronger memory of our true self. And that's what ends the world gently, the world of separation. Be thy true, true self knowing. Don't forget this. Go and listen to what I've just said again. Go and listen to it 20 times. I'm not the first person to say it. Ken Wapnick, says, Ken Wapnick said it 20 years ago. 
Uh, I'm just bringing it in a stronger non-dualistic way. So let's start on the lessons. So lesson 271, like I said before, listen to one a day if that's all you can do, or you can listen to all 10 in a row. And that means by the time you've reached the end of the week, you've done 10 times 10, seven times 10. So just keep listening to all of them. And this just reinforces your true self, the knowing of your true self. Lesson 271. And I remember when I say Christ, don't imagine Jesus. Although Jesus is symbolic of Christ and Holy Spirit, we're now talking Christ, Christ's true self, our true essence. Christ is the vision I will use today. Christ's vision is awakened awareness, which means no judgment, the total acceptance of what is being present here now. No thought, no sensation, no emotion, no feeling. No separation, no idea of sin, no fear, no guilt. Being present. Each day, every hour, each instant, I am choosing what I want to look upon. Remember, you choose the world because it's an outer reflection of an inner condition. If you see a horrible world, a world of war, a world at war, your mind's at war. If the world shines its smiling faces at you, no longer listening to the news, to whatever, you just show up nothing is your nothing is nothing to do with you the rest of the world's problems nothing to do you show up whatever's in front of you you act from a place of passionate compassion not empathy empathy says i see my brother's sins i see his guilt i see his weaknesses and i feel them and now i'm dragged down into his same illusion above the battlefield true compassion not empathy We've been taught that empathy is good. So we want to say, oh, we are emotional. We were the little children that were very emotional. Now we've become adults. Now we're prouder to say we're empathetic. Hey, rise above that. You're not empathetic. You are compassionate. The passion of the self, the passion of the Christ, the love for all of your fractured selves. But you do not suffer with them. You pull them up. Compassion versus empathy. Learn the difference. I'm choosing what I want to look upon, and I'm choosing to see Christ's mind. I'm choosing to see the reflection of the love of God everywhere, the sounds I want to hear, the witnesses to what I want to be the truth from me. Do I want to see myself as a suffering fool, a special suffering fool with special gifts and psychic abilities and high empathy that suffers everything? Or do I want to see myself the untouchable, defenseless, innocent, ever unchanging, holy son of God? Today, I choose to look upon what Christ would have me see. Love is what I am. To listen to God's voice, the memory within myself that knows what I am and seek the witness to what is true in God's creation. What is true? Unconditional love, total light, the light of awareness. No space, no objects. There's no me, there's no you, there's no Jesus in heaven. There's just light. In Christ's sight, the world and God's creation meet. The world, the world is ego, subjective reality. And God's creation, God's creation is true, absolute reality. So how can absolute reality meet subjective reality? As you bring subjective reality, shadow, to absolute reality, light dissolves. Only light is left. And as they come together, all perception, the world, disappears. His kindly sight redeems the world from death. Christ's, kind, Christ's pure awareness that knows it's just light redeems the world from death, the idea of death. From nothing that he looks on must but live. For nothing that he looks on but must live. It's all life. It's The whole universe is one life, one organism appearing as billions of different things. He looks on but what must live, remembering the Father and the Son, creator and creation unified, light forever extending. The world is simply a veil that hides the essence energy of what we are and what God is. Pure light, awareness, forever extending here now. Father, Christ's vision is the way to see you, to know you, not looking on objects. What he beholds invites your memory, your Holy Spirit, to be restored to me so that I know I am spirit, your Holy Spirit, forever extending. The truth of me is holy. And this I choose to be what I would look upon today. This is Christ's realization. Jesus, the Christ's realization, because he called down into his dream the memory of what he is. And the minute he called it down, he was ascended. 
because you cannot bring illusions to truth. So the minute he called it into himself, he was raised into Christ's mind and became symbolic of what true Christ consciousness, what awakened awareness appears in this world. Was he the only one? No. Ramana Maharshi, Buddha, Krishna, many others. Of course, the Christian church will tell you it's only Jesus. Jesus is the son of God. Hey, we're all one son of God. Jesus was just that which fully realized and he's become our teacher. Are there more than one teachers? There's thousands of them. Are there more than one paths? There's thousands of them. The minute you think your path is the only one or more special or higher, you lost. It, there's many paths to the one truth we are. Lesson 272. How can illusions satisfy God's son? When, he's all, when he resided and abided eternally in pure love, pure peace, pure joy, and he fell asleep and dreamt the dream of separation, sin, fear, guilt, and then try to make things to preoccupy him so that he wasn't, he would forget his guilt, he would forget his sin, he would forget his fear. And what do we live? What's this world about? It's all about trying to be special, trying to be recognized, trying to be validated, trying to find self-worth, trying to improve ourselves. Okay, so we have little moments of happiness and the rest is suffering, dis despair, or at best, worry and, and concerned about the future and planning for a rainy day. How can that possibly satisfy a permanent perpetual state of peace and joy and all-encompassing love? That's what we all want. And yet we want, we think people and things and, and Jesus is going to give it to me. Jesus isn't going to give it to you. Christ is you. The same Christ that Jesus became aware of as his true self is your true self. Father, the truth belongs to me. My home is set in heaven by your will. How can you be anyone else, anyone else if God has set you there? And it's by your will and my will. Can dreams content me? Absolutely not. Why are you doing this course? Your dreams failed you. Don't try and now create happier dreams with Jesus or the deity or something. Return to the knowing of your Christ self. Can illusions bring me happiness? What but your memory can satisfy your son, but the full memory of what he is as the extension of God. I will accept no less than you have given me the full joyous awareness of the love I am. I am surrounded by your love forever still, forever quiet, forever peaceful forever gentle and forever safe and loving. God's son must be as you created him because what God creates is permanent. I'm surrounded by your love. Surrounded, why? Because we're in God. We've never left. The fish is in the water looking for the ocean. Today, we will pass illusions by. We'll pass fantasies by. Let go, let go. We'll stop thinking, no thoughts. Thought is illusion. The only thought you share with God is silent stillness. Love, the love of God, silent stillness. And if we hear temptation, attack thoughts, call to us to stay, another fantasy. What else can I make manifest? And linear in a dream, we turn aside and ask ourselves if we, direct part, the sons of God, could be content with dreams. Direct part. I could see peace instead of this. Oh, I want a happy, happy. Hey, by all means, go on a holiday and build a house and get married and have kids. By all means, do all the things that your heart's desire, but realize what you are and why you're having those things. If you're doing anything because you were wanting to attain joy and love and peace and recognition and self-awareness, you're doing it for the wrong reasons because it's coming from a place of fear and lack. But if you do something from a place of love and sharing your compassionate, joyous love, unconditional with the world, you're doing it for the right reasons. Ask ourselves, if we, the sons of God, could be content with dreams, when heaven, permanent love, can be chosen just as easily as hell, and love will happily replace all fear. I can choose peace and heaven instead of this. But what do we do? Who, I want heaven, I want peace, but let me think about this some longer. Oh, let me try and contemplate this. Oh, let me try and figure this out. Oh, let me think about this. Let me think why this is happening. Let me think why the world, what are, why is this happening to me? Why am I suffering? Why am I in pain? Why am I unhappy? Well, there must be a reason. Let me, let me investigate. What are you investigating? Illusions. Put it down. Walk away. Be thyself peacefully, joyously, silently, happy. Be what you are. Be as you are. 
What can you possibly do in this world to make yourself more awake? Meditate, yoga, jog, breathe, understand the chakras and kundalini. Concepts. Abide in silent stillness. Ask God to return to your memory. Thy will be done. And then state it as it's done by saying, Amen. 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 The four carrier angels. What is that? It's symbolically. You're setting it. You're creating it. You're saying, Amen. 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 I'm, this, is, this is real for me. The love of God is my reality. Lesson 273. The stillness. Listen now. Silent stillness. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. Stillness is peace. Peace is God. Stillness is God. Stillness contains the memory of God. Stillness is awareness. Awareness is spirit. Spirit is God. The stillness of peace of God. The peace of God is mine. I am the peace of God. I am the love of God. I am the joy of God. Silent stillness replicates God's essence energy. Essence energy, God's spirit. Essence energy, spirit. And the awareness of awareness, self, spirit, awareness, energy, one, indivisible, essence, energy. Perhaps we are now ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility. Amen, we are ready. If this is not yet feasible, because I'm still thinking, we are content and even more than satisfied to learn how such a day can be achieved. Because you're still conceptualizing, still busy with that really, really busy brain. Oh, you like it. You like to think you think. If we give away to a disturbance, an attack thought, an irritation, pain, suffering, idea, the past coming up. If we give way to a disturbance, let us learn how to dismiss it and return to peace. Do not give it attention. Starve it of attention. People, places, things, and events disturb you. Realize that it's all love and give it no attention. If a person that doesn't realize they are love wants to attack you, first realize, mm -hmm, why am I seeing this? I'm seeing it because I'm not meant to give it attention. Starve it of attention. Don't ask people for your attention. Don't ask people for your love. Don't ask people for their love and their attention. Hey, abide. You already have and are everything you need. We but need to tell our minds with certainty, with clarity. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. And then nothing. Abide in silent stillness. Abide in gratitude. As often as you can. You're in an argument with someone. Stop for a second. Take a deep breath. Peace and love of God are mine. And then carry on arguing if you want to. But realize how quickly the miracle comes. Just by centering in the love of God we are. And nothing can intrude upon the peace of God. That God himself has given to his son as himself. God has given himself. You are made from God. Or did he go to the supermarket and get some angel fairy dust from the fairy dust supermarket and make you? God is all there is. He made you from what it, all there is himself. Peace is our essential nature because it's God's essential nature. We can only be made from God's essential nature. God's essential nature is peace. It's joy. It's love. You are that because we're made in God's likeness, not as an appearance. God is not an image. God doesn't have a brain. He doesn't have a mind and face and lips and an image and a mirror. We're each other's mirrors. We need mirrors. God doesn't need a mirror. He shares himself, light forever. Father, your peace is mine. Your love is mine. Your joy is mine. Your essence energy is mine. Claim it. Claim it. Know it. What need have I to fear that anything can rob me of what you would have me keep, of what you made me from? I cannot lose your gifts to me. I cannot lose the essence I am, which you made me, which you created me as. And so the peace you gave your son is with me still in quietness. Hey, it's there. But go be still and know I am. Be still and know I am. And in my own eternal love for you is where it is. God is the love with which we love God. God is the love with which we love. God is the love which animates even our dream of separation. But when we realize that which animates is the essence energy, the life spark, the life we are, what else do you want to know? 
less than 274 every day, not just today. Today belongs to love. Let me know. Let me not fear. Every day belongs to love. For days are timeless. These days are illusions of space and time created by the idea of sin, okay, the past, fear, the future, okay, and guilt now. So separation, the idea of separation created matter. The idea of I sinned past. Because you always sinned in the past. Fear, the future. So I'm going to replicate. And guilt is what keeps me bound in the now, stuck in the now, fearing the future. So I'm never in the now. Because in the now, there's no thought. There's only silent stillness. Accept what is, is the path to peace. Nothing real can be threatened. Father, today, I would let things be as you created them. Silent stillness, ever-extending love. And give your son the self I am, the honor due to sinlessness and everyone else, everyone's sinless, not just me, not just I, everyone is. The love of a brother to his brother and his friend. We're all friends, we're all brothers, sisters, whatever you want to call it. We're one being. Through this I am redeemed. Through this I know I am redeemed. Through this I know my true self, who is the Christ, who is the Son of God, who is the every extension love of God. I know I am this. The rest is illusion. Any thought comes, it's illusion. Any world appear, it's illusion. Any attack thought, it's illusion. I'm not giving attention to illusions. I'm only giving thought to the truth. What's the truth? Silent stillness. And this passionate joy that comes through me, this passionate, joyous compassion to share my loving self with all of myself. You're all me. I'm doing this for myself. One indivisible being in God. Through this as well, and the truth will enter where illusions were, where ideas were. Light will replace all darkness, shadows, sin, fear, guilt. And your son, the I am, will know he is as you created him. I will know my I am. Be still and know I am. Full stop. Not this and that. I am. And the I am is the self-same essence as my source. Be still and know I am. Full stop. God. A special blessing comes to us today from him who is our father, who is our source, who is our primordial essence, energy, awareness. Give us they to him and there will be no fear today. No fear of the past, no fear of the future. What can go wrong? What can happen? My spouse, my friend, my cat, my dog, my whatever is going to be hurt or die. No, no. Return. The script is written. It's your fear based on your past sin, current guilt. It makes the, fear, the future so fearful. And now you want to act as if you can make a difference. At least ask for help if you want to act. At least ask the presence of awareness of the Christ as yourself in your mind, in your awareness as the self. Give him, give this day to him. And there will be no fear today. Because what are you fearing? The dissolution of illusions, the dissolution of Space, time, matter, when you're pure energy, when everything is pure energy. Now, by all means, if your kid is sick, your dog is sick, your cat's sick, doesn't mean you don't act. Of course you act, but you act from a place of love, not fear. Remember your love. If you're acting from a place of fear, you're projecting fear. You think your kid, your cat, your dog doesn't pick up your fear? They're, they're not reacting to the fact that you're gone. They're reacting because you're fearing the possible worst outcome. Be present here now. Pista, Sophia, wisdom, be here now. Give this day to him and there will be no fear today because the day is given unto love, the love you are, the love God is, the love we are, one shared being. Love, peace, and joy is a right-minded choice. Just a separation, sin, fear, and guilt is a choice. Where are you choosing to place your mind? Oh, the world's happening. Oh, I'm so fearful. You've placed your mind in wrong-mindedness. Right-mindedness. Be here now. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. What else do you want to know, Holy Son? Remember thyself. Choose wisely. Be vigilant. Where's my mind? No, I'm fear. I'm gone into wrong mind. What's my right-minded? Holy Spirit, show me another way. God, be present in me now. Christ, be present in me now. And if you're still at that early stage, Jesus be present with me now, or Buddha be present with me now. But realize Buddha, Jesus, Krishna are the same essence energy as your Holy Spirit, 
but they symbolize the truth of you because you're not ready to accept yourself as that. So then bring Jesus into you. But realize at some stage, Jesus and you are the same. Self, one, holy, indivisible self, holy, indivisible son of God, ever extending the love of God. Lesson 275, God's healing voice protects all things today. What's the voice for God? Memory. God's healing memory. Because how does the memory heal? The memory reminds us that we are permanently perfect. We're not healing. We have no need for healing as the true self, as the fractured body minds. We don't need healing here. What are we asking when we need healing? We're asking that our mind be healed. Because what's the effect of healing? Bodies that are sore, people, places, things, and events. What heals? The mind. We return to the right mind. We're all as one. Before time for, was came into existence. And so when we return to our right mind, there's only one mind, right-mindedness, Christ mind. We are healed. Why? Because we are perfect, defenseless, innocent, ever-perfect son of God. So don't ask for a physical healing. Ask that the mind be healed. Let us today attend the voice for God, which speaks of an ancient lesson, no more true today than any other day. Yet this day has been chosen as the time when we will seek and hear and learn and understand and then transcend. Join me in hearing. This is the Christ calling us all to join in the memory for the voice for God, the memory of God tells us of things we cannot understand alone nor learn apart. Hence, I'm speaking to you and you're speaking with me. Why? Because we're mirrors to one another. I'm a reflection of you, you're a reflection of me. And hence, we have the symbolic Jesus and the Christ to teach us, the memory for God to teach us. And we have each other to reflect upon and to share a, a different understanding. I'm just passing on what has been written before I appeared into the space and time. I'm not saying anything new that Jesus didn't say 2,000 years ago or Buddha said or whoever. It's been said throughout time because there's always been one of us getting it and sharing it. What's happening in this world today? Who the world's awakening. It's, it's accelerating. Hey, don't be in a hurry. It's always been accelerating. Not special now. Just because you're now more aware because you've got internet and Facebook and you're aware there's more people. These people have been everywhere anyway. There's always a certain percentile of the world that is elevating to awakening. It's just you're now more aware of it. Why? The awareness of the mind is now shared through internet, the websites, the, in, the, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the WhatsApps. We're connecting physically as our mind connects. An external representation of an inner condition. As we connect, so we create technology that shows our connection. Ooh, what about AI? There's nothing more artificially intelligent than a human brain. So don't even give it AI any thought. Isn't AI going to destroy us? Only if you programmed it to destroy you. It's not sentient. It's not going to come up with ways of vengeance. That's human condition. If you're fearing it, it's because it's in your head. Okay. The voice for God tells us of things we cannot understand alone nor learn apart. Why? Because we're not alone and we're not apart. We're all parts of the same self. We're not apart from the self. We're only apart from our awake mind temporarily while we dream of dream that never happened. It is in this that all things are protected. Why? Because you've never left the kingdom and nothing can be harmed in the kingdom. And in this, the healing of the voice for God is found. Silent stillness abide in gratitude. Your healing voice, Father, protects all things today. And this self too, this fractured self too. And so I leave all things to you. I truly let go. I let God. I need be anxious over nothing. What am I fearing? Who I'm not good enough? For what are you not good enough? Holy son of God, you're more than good enough. Every single fractured of us, fractured part of us contains the essence element called Christ mind. What are you worrying about? The rest the illusion, not tall enough, not skinny enough, not rich enough, not pretty enough, not whatever enough. Hey, What's not enough isn't real. What is more than enough is true. Your holy essence, your holy self. You are spirit and you abide in God. God is spirit and abides in you. What more do you want? For your voice will tell me what to do and where to go and, to, and whom to speak to and what to say to them and what thoughts to think. Shh. 
just in case you don't hear, he's saying, shh. What words to give the world? Less the better. The safety that I bring, the safety that I, the I am, bring, is given me. Because it is mine, given to me by God, forever mine. Father, your voice, your memory protects all things through me. Why? It's the memory of perfect oneness in heaven. I've never left. And go one step further than asking the voice to show you where to go, what to say, what to do. The wonderful prayer of St. Francis Assisi. Go one step further. Father, help me heal my mind. Help me realize my true mind is healed, but help me heal this fractured mind. And that means help me see the vision of Christ. See without judgment. There's a pain, I take a pull. There's a go to the doctor. There, you act. There's a cat drowning in the pool. You jump in and you help it. There's a kid drowning in the pool. You have a sandwich and then you help it. Especially if it threw the cat in. <laughs> I'm a cat person. Okay, of course you jump in there and help the kid. Of course you do. You, you, the neighbor's screaming. You jump over the fence. You go see what's wrong. Oh, it's the kid. He's drowning the cat. You act. Okay? Act from a place of love. I'm going to beat up on the kid now. Just love smile don't take any of it seriously a dream is not to be taken seriously the only thing you should take seriously is you want to awaken from it that's it lesson 276 the word of god is given me to speak now hey careful first there was the word and the word was god and the word became form that's the ego story okay in the bible that's ego bible from dot one is the all ego story and the making of an egoic God, a symbolic ego God. Put that stuff away, okay? Start anew. The word of God has given me to speak. Now, the word means the truth. And the truth is light. And the light is essence energy. The essence energy of God has given me to speak, to share. No judgment. Hey, do I speak without judgment? The very fact that I'm speaking means I'm believing I need to do something, which is a thought, which means it's a judgment. If I was to tell you the truth, it would sound like this. That was the truth. Did you hear it? Gave you a whole conversation. Just explained 16.4 billion years of nothing to you in those moments of nothing. Share, but share from a place of knowing, not from a need for an audience or look at me, I'm so clever. And if you're charging for it, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. That's it. If people want to give you donations, by all means. If you're making a living by sharing the truth, you're in the wrong space. You're not telling the truth. The very fact that you're chasing money to do it. My opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't believe I am. What is the word of God? The word of God is the truth. And what is the word of God? My son is pure and holy as myself. My son is the extension of myself. And therefore, the son and myself are one. My son is pure. Love, essence, energy. Forever extending is the love of God. I am. If God could speak, that's what he would say. And thus did God become the father of the son he loves. For thus was he created this the word his son did not create with him because in this his son was born let us accept his fatherhood and all is given us now the father creates the son but the son doesn't create the father so that's why people say god is dreaming no no god does not dream the son the extension there was a glitch in the extension why it was given free will and it wanted to play. It wanted to imagine a, a different few, a different experience. That's all. We don't understand it. That's a symbolic story. Just forget about it. It's just return to self. This, the wordy son did not create. Okay, so we didn't create God. But when we fell asleep, we imagined a God. So the God of the Bible, the God of religion, is, is egoic made. Because we gave God the attributes of ourself. We made him vengeful and fearful and judgmental. God, God, God does not judge. God, God cannot judge. It's pure love. Pure love is unconditional, 
unconditional cannot judge. Let us accept his fatherhood. Let us accept his authority. Thy will be done. Why are we here? Because thy will be done as long as it suits my will. You will give me more. Give us our daily bread and a house and a car and a lover and, a, and, a, and, a, and more bread and some more bread. Thy will be done. What is? And then I act when I'm called to. Let us accept his fatherhood. Because what's our biggest problem? The authority problem. And that's why we hate bosses and presidents and anybody in authority because they take away our power. They can only take away your power if you give it away. If you give them any attention, any thought. Who can destroy you? Who could hurt you? They can only hurt the illusionary body mind. They cannot hurt the truth. Deny we were created in God's love and we deny ourself. Our self is pure love. Our self is Christ. Christ, pure love, pure light of awareness. To be unsure of who we are, of who our father is and for what purpose we have come. Deny we were created in his love and we deny ourselves. And if we deny ourselves, we're unsure of who we are, what we are, of what our Father is, of who God is, and why are we here? And why have we come here? Not to have fun and an adventure, blah, blah, blah. That's spiritual mumbo jumbo nonsense. You come here for one reason only, to remember thyself. And you're only going to remember what you are through the experience of what you're not. Neti, neti. We have come to remember that we are one indivisible Christ self, the son of God, forever extending God's love. And yet we but and yet we need but acknowledge him who gave his word, his essence, energy, life to us in our creation, as we were created from his essence. We just need to realize that's true. My energy is God, my silence is God, my love is God's love. To remember him and so recall, remember myself, be myself knowingly. This idea we were born of original sin, <laughs> nonsense. You were never born in, because how can you be born of original sin if you were never born? It's just you dreamt yourself into existence. So there is no sin. There's just the idea of sin, fear, and guilt. Yes, it, you may sin in the world, but it's a dream. It wasn't true. So give it no more attention. Father, your word is mine. Your memory is mine. The memory of you is mine. I choose to remember it. And it's this that I would speak of to all my brothers who are given me as mirrors of myself to cherish as my own. As I am loved and blessed and saved by you, so I will love and save and bless the rest of myself who are one in my mind, my Christ mind, my son of God mind. One in you, one indivisible, Father and Son, oneness forever. You've never left, Holy Son of God. You're remembering now. Just abide, abiding in silent stillness and gratitude speeds it up in ways that you cannot imagine. Can't write about it in books, can't explain it in words. Lesson 277. Let me not bind your son with the laws I've made. Oh, it's going to take me another seven incarnations. And, oh, I'm going to go to the spirit world and ascend. And I'm going to become an angel. And then I'm going to go to the Pallades and become a star child and project into the world. And I'm going to play with crystals and, and Reiki and breathing and prana and save the whatever. Hey, there's nothing to say. Put it away. The ego's laws, the mutable laws of the ego is constant change, constant evolution. The immutable law of God, the immutable, cannot be changed. It's permanent oneness. What is given to one is given to all, and it's all equally the same. Love is love. Eternally extending. Love. Your son, that extension of love is free, my father. Let me not imagine I am age. Imagine. I am bound. I have bound him with the laws I made to rule the body of space and time. And now we want a longevity. Now we want to live forever. Now we want to take all sorts of medicines and whatever. The latest is, is gummy something. We gummy, gummy NMN. We're going to live for longer. We're going to longevity. Hey, how long you want to live in a body when you live forever as the love you are? The sun is not subject to any laws that I made by which I try to make the body more secure, live longer, live healthier, have no pain, have no grief, have no whatever, I need no nothing. Hey, it's either too fat or too skinny or too this or too that. And if you have the perfect body, that's going to hurt somewhere. 
He is not changed by what is changeable. He, he's not changed by appearances. He's not slave to any laws of time. He is as you created him, pure light, pure awareness, because he knows no laws except the law of one, the law of love. The law of love is the law of one. Everything is love, and what's given to one is given to all. Let us not worship idols. And idols are Jesus's too. And Marys and angels and unicorns and Buddhas and Krishnas and, and blah, 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 blah. They're just decorations. Don't take idols too seriously. It's just, hey, came out of a restaurant. Nowhere else to put my Harley home. That's it. Okay? Don't, ooh, let's put up a picture of the guru and <laughs> acknowledge that, hey, the minute you put up a picture, you make it an idol. The minute you make it an idol, you've forgotten the essence of it. We just not worship idols, not bodies. Who I want to be like this. I want to emulate that person. Who I want to be like Batman or Thor or Spider-Man or whatever other geek you love. Hey, let it all go. Let's not worship idols, nor believe in any law of idolatry. Bodies are made to die and whatever. That the law of idolatry would make to hide the freedom of your true essence, forever free, forever liberated. Freedom is not of bodies. Freedom is of the mind. He is not bound except by his beliefs. We're only bound by our beliefs of space and time and laws and nonsense. Yet what he is is far beyond his faith in slavery or faith in freedom. He is free because he is his father's son. Father's son, father's essence, essence energy, forever extending the love and light we are. He cannot be bound, bound unless God's truth can lie. And God can will that heaven deceive himself. How can, he, how can he deceive himself? God is not a body with a brain, not a being. He doesn't have human characteristics. He doesn't lie. He doesn't bend the truth to suit himself. God is pure love, pure energy. He cannot lie or, be, or deceive or be deceived. It's pure love, pure energy. It's the life force we all are. Lesson 278. If I am bound, my father is not free. And if my father is not free, then I am bound by illusions. We were created from the essence energy of God, love, ever extending, untouchable, unchangeable. If we can be bound, then God can be bound. God cannot be bound. This, this angry God that the Bible speaks of, that's our imagination. Our imagined God to appease our ideas of separation. We hate that God and we believe that God is out to get us. That God is not true. True God is pure love. And if you, even the word God's not sufficient to explain it, and love is not sufficient to love, the closest you get is just silent stillness in total gratitude, in total, total gratitude. If I accept that I am prisoner within a body or oh, a spirit inside a body in a world in which all things that seem to live appear to die, then is my father prisoner with me because my father is that essence energy. Where does that go? When the body dies, Ooh, up to the spirit world, and then it reincarnates, and then it's back here again, and it's forgotten, and it starts all over again. No, no. My father's essence energy that lives forever, consciously aware of the awareness we all are. And this do I believe. When I maintain the laws, the world obeys, and I must obey. Hey, let it all go. I don't believe in that shit anymore. The frailties and the sins. What sin? Which I perceive are real and cannot be escaped. I dump all that nonsense. If I am bound in any way, I do not know my father, my God, my essence energy, and myself. The essence energy I am is the extension of God. Do you want to know that essence energy? Abide in silent stillness. That's it. That silent stillness, that's God. That's the closest we'll get because you're still perceiving it. Love is the recognition of our shared essence. And our shared essence is love. And love is God. And what's our shared essence? Silent. And am I lost to all reality? Of course I am, if I know not myself and my father. When I know my father as myself, myself as my father, father is spirit and abides in me. I'm spirit, abide in God. How can I be lost? For truth is free. And what is bound and what dies, I am age is not me. Image, identity, fearsome guilt. That's not true. Put it down, holy son of God. Enough already.
Father, I ask for nothing but the truth. I have had many foolish thoughts and dreams about myself and my creation. And I bought, a, I bought into the dream of fear into my mind. Today, I would not dream. Go straight to silent stillness. Abide in gratitude. I choose the way to you. Instead, go within. Instead of the madness, instead of fear, instead of guilt. For truth is safe and it's silent and it's permanent. And only love is secure. The way to you is to realize I've never left and to abide in that essence energy of silent stillness and know that that silent stillness is my essence energy I share with God. And the rest will filter through in the silence. Lesson 279. Creation's freedom promises my own. Creation is free and I am creation. I am God's creation. I am God's love. The end of dreams has promised me because God's son is not abandoned by his love, by his father, by source energy. Only in dreams is there a time where he appears to be in a prison and awaits a future freedom, if it be at all. Yet in reality, his dreams are gone with truth established in their place. Be here now. And now is freedom his already. Should I wait in chains? which I have been served for release when God is offering me my freedom now, be here now, Holy Son of God. The dream is over, but we are replaying it because we haven't forgiven the guilt we carry for dreaming a dream that never happened. What, what need of guilt is there when it never happened? I will accept your promises today, Father, and give my faith to them, faith in no longer the unknown, faith in that silent stillness, which is my essence energy, which is the love I am. My father loves the son whom he created as his own, as the extension of energy, the extension of the essence energy we call love. Would you withhold the gifts you gave to me? Unconditional love is unconditional. It does not withhold. There's no one better or higher or suited or at a higher level. It's oneness, one indivisible holy son of God in one indivisible mind of God. Lesson 280. What limits can I lay upon God's son? One indivisible son ever extending the love we are. Whom God created limitless is free to be limitless. Not as a body mind, as energy. Not, oh, let me limitlessly create abundance in this world. If you do from a place of love, then you'll do because you want to share it. Not because you want to keep it to yourself. Stop dreaming of making manifest more people, places, things, and events. If it comes in a vision, you're meant to act, act. But don't now, let's, let's imagine. No, no, stop imagining. Imaging. Imaging is identity. No more imagining. I am age. I can inve invent imprisonment for him, but only in illusions, not in truth. I can put myself into prison. I can see myself as victim to the world I see, or I can choose to realize, thank you for being a victim. Thank you for showing me that through my suffering, I've now realized I chose it and I no longer want it because I want to know what I have. No more suffering. No thought of God has left his father's mind. Son of God cannot leave his father's mind because he is the extension of his father. No thought of God is limited at all. But don't, don't bring it into fantasies. Oh, Jesus, come hold my hand. Let me make limitless. Let me make limitless amount of money. Oh, I want to save the cats and the dolphins. And it's always a noble cause and the kids. Hey, be here now. Heal my mind. When my mind is healed, I heal the world. Because it's one healing mind, which is permanently healed as the love of God. No thought of God is limited at all. No thought of God is but forever pure. Can I limit, can I lay limits on the Son of God, on my mind? His Father willed that he be limitless and like himself in freedom and in love. Today, Father, let me honor, let me give honor to you. Let me give honor to your Son. Let me give honor to my Christ self. Why? Because I share the essence with you. To honor myself is to honor you, Father. For thus alone I find the way to you, because I now know. If I know myself, I know my Father. I can't know God and then myself. I have to know myself because it's made from the self-same essence as God. Know myself, I know my Father. To remember self is to know God. To remember self is not to remember God. To remember self is to know God. Because the minute you remember self, you remember the son you are. Who knows his father? 
Father, I lay no limits on the love on the son you love, and you created limitless, ever extending light and joy and peace. The honor that I give to him is yours. And what is yours belongs to me as well. What belongs to God belongs to us all, for we are one shared self in God. There is no place where God ends and we begin. It's one seamless, ever-extending love, light, the joyous essence, the joyous lightness of being. Be you that knowingly. Thanks for joining me, Holy Son of God. Be thyself knowingly. Remember yourself. Remember your Father. Amen, 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 and amen. And so be it. Thanks for joining me.